Good morning, Bucknoters. Welcome to the Bucknuts Morning 5 here on Friday, January 7th, 2022. I am Dave Biddle. I am very happy to be joined by Jonah Booker for his usual Friday visit. When it's not a national holiday like it was the previous two Fridays. It's been a while, my man. A lot to get into. Let's start right at the top. Greg Stodrawa out as Ohio State offensive line coach. It looks like Justin Fry in. In fact, we are recording this show Thursday night, by the time the listeners hear this, it might be official. From everything I'm hearing, it's a matter of time. Justin Fry will be Ohio State's new offensive line coach. Your thoughts, JB? Yeah, we we have speculated that Stud might be on the hot seat for several weeks now, and Justin Fry was the name that you had thrown out, you know, during this season as a potential replacement. I just think that the course uh, pretty much ran as far when it came to Stud. He was a guy that. You know, he had some success at Ohio State. There were some solid lines there. And I just think that the the combination of recruiting misses and the offensive line not being dominant in the run game kind of did him he did him in down the stretch there. Uh, you know, he he went along with playing the four offensive tackles on the offensive line, which you know, they didn't play bad, but they weren't great, Dave. The the running game, I just felt like, was severely lacking. You just wasn't getting that bull push that you would typically get from a true guard. And and just the overall national landscape when it came to recruiting for Stud, he had a significant amount of misses on the recruiting trail. Yeah, he was able to secure some uh, some guys in the backyard in the state of Ohio, but when you're Ohio State, you need premier offensive tackles if you want to take that next step to competing with Alabama and Georgia on the big stage. And those were some guys that he lost those battles to um, pretty much. And I just think that with Justin Fry coming in, he has that relationship with Ryan Day. He's a younger guy. If you look at 24-7, people are, are already speculating about what type of recruiter he is. We don't know. That's to be determined because if you look at his history, it doesn't show a whole lot. And you have to question, is that because of where he was at at UCLA? We don't know. But hopefully when he gets here, one, he's going to be able to develop the guys that he currently has. And two, he has to be able to recruit at a high level. It sounds like from everything I've heard, I'm sure you've heard the same thing, is that when Day initially took over in 2019, given his previous relationship with Justin Fry, and it's not just because we got to be careful when we talk about, oh, they're, they're friends, they, they like each other. Like we have, we still have post traumatic Bill Davis syndrome and things like that from the Urban Meyer era, but it's more than that. Obviously, Coach Day feels like Justin Fry is a hell of an offensive line coach. And from everything I've heard, when Day took over in 2019 from Urban, he wanted to hire Justin Fry, reached out. And that's when UCLA, uh, coincidentally, gave Justin Fry the title of offensive coordinator, even though he wasn't calling the plays, Chip Kelly was, and gave him a boost in pay. Sounds like this is the guy that Ryan Day's always wanted. Yeah, and if, if this is a guy that Day was targeting from day one and he's able to get him now, you have to trust that Ryan Day is making the correct decisions. Because when you're a first-time head coach at the time, you're trying to surround yourself with the best possible talent of coaches that's going to help you succeed and thrive in your first time position at a major program like Ohio State so it it, for Ohio State fans yes as you mentioned yes they're friends and we have the friends and family coaching jokes that go around on the message boards especially the Bill Davis and Urban Meyer down the the stretch of his you know last couple years at Ohio State he he whiffed on a lot of his coaching hires and a lot of people believe that he kind of got lazy in that aspect where the promotion from within and uh, hiring guys that he's friends with kind of did him in as far as, you know, taking that next step to being a dynasty at Ohio State. But I- I'm excited to see you got a younger guy um, in there. Let's see what he can do. Um, I'm I'm the type of person that, uh, you know, show me. And at that point, I can make my you know, sound decision on what type of 
coach you are at this level because if he comes in here and this offensive line is playing at a very high level then a lot of people are going to one you know congratulate ryan day for hitting out the park with a with a solid hire and two if he can come in here and uh go toe-to-toe with the big boys and show that he has some form of recruiting chops because at a place like at ohio state the fans play they pay very close attention to recruiting and they will hold the coaches accountable if they're not recruiting at a, li- a high level like they're supposed to. One of the reasons, you know, Brian Hartline is so below at Ohio State is not because he's just a former player that helps. Is one, Brian Hartline gets the most out of all of his wide receivers. He he develops his guys, and two, he is a beast on the recruiting trail. And if you can show that you can do that at Ohio State, then – the fan base will be 100% behind you no matter where you came from. Looks like Kerry Combs might be the next one out the door. We know Matt Barnes is out. We know Stud is out. Sounds like Kerry Combs will be next. Your thoughts on that? Do you think um, Kerry will be out and Jim Knowles will be able to hire his own defensive backs coach? And, and do you think that'll be it as far as any coaching changes? <sighs> I mean, it's it's a tough situation with Kerry because, you know, everybody likes Kerry Combs, they, you know, he's he's really looked upon in a favorable light when it comes to Ohio State fans. But I just think that he was in over his head when it came to the defensive coordinator position. He is a heck of a recruiter, a position coach, a motivator. I wouldn't be surprised if he's out. I just think that at this point in time, you can't be paying him the type of salary that you're paying him just to be a position coach. And to be frank, it might be time, Dave, just to have some new, fresher, young blood in the back in there. A guy that Jim knows, uh, feel comfortable with, that's going to be able to complement his defense and knows his defense. Or he's a guy that uh, Jim feels comfortable with. Because right now, when you when you turn when you hand the keys to Jim, you want to have you want to let him be able to call the shots. He's going to be the CEO of the defense and give him what he wants. If he wants to bring in some of his guys or he wants to bring in someone who knows what he's going to do, then you have to let him do that. You can't pigeonhole him with a guy like Kerry Combs just because he can recruit. And if you look at the recruiting rankings, Kerry actually had a down year compared to what he's had in the years past. Um, As far as the other coaches, there's a lot of smoke out there that Larry Johnson could retire. That's up in the air. Some people say just rip the Band-Aid off right now because at most Larry probably has one more year. Uh, Some people speculate that Larry may stay around just for one more year so that they can lock in those recruits that they're currently targeting on the defensive line with Hero Canoe and Amari uh, Abar from Texans and stuff who committed this past week. But who knows? I mean, that to me, with the portal so wide open, those guys can leave anytime anyways. So you just have to make sure that you're getting your defense squared away because I truly believe this program ceiling is so high. You look at it, and I, I said it on Twitter the other day, that you have a, a program that went to the national championship and won 11 games with the defense being incompetent. If you can just get the defense squared away, there's no telling where this program can go. I just look at where Alabama, Georgia, those teams are at. Ohio State can be in that realm. They can take that next step and potentially push Alabama in a national championship game if they can get the defense fixed. But first, you have to be able to get the right coaching staff hires in place. As you mentioned about Hero Canoe possibly being a Buckeye, the All-American Bowl is tomorrow. Hero Canoe will make his decision. We have crystal balls from the Dean, Bill Curlick, the Fong, Steve Wilt Fong. That's fantastic news for Ohio State that both of those gentlemen have crystal balled Hero Canoe to the Buckeyes. Also, man, I mean, Devin Brown has been showing out all week. Future Ohio State quarterback Devin Brown, who'll be a true freshman later this year. He has been looking good all week. Just your thoughts on how Devin Brown's been looking, your confidence level in Hero Canoe picking the Buckeyes tomorrow, and anything else that's been uh, standing out regarding the All-American Bowl? Yes, Hero Canoe, he's a big get here. If, the, if Ohio State can snag him, it's going to be a monster defensive line haul once again. So you're, you're looking at pairing him with the guys that you have and – that's why a lot of people think that there is a slight chance that Larry Johnson could stick around 
for one more year just to get those guys in the door and then kind of smooth that transition for the next potential defensive line coach. But Devin Brown, I mean, if you watch some of his films, the guy's arm talent jumps off the page there. He can just sit there in the pocket, flick of wrist, and that ball is thrown on a rope or he is just launching it with a cannon, it looks like. So I'm, I'm pretty excited to get him on campus. And the way you look at I know Drew Allard, the number one quarterback at Penn State, has looked pretty darn good at the All-American Bowl. But I'm extremely happy with the guy that Ohio State has. And then you look at the wide receiver. Uh, once again, Kojo Otwai, the, the Ohio State commit, he is balling out down at the All-American Bowl. I know some of the guys are going to be uh, pulled out of there because of COVID, and they're upset about that. But so far, the Ohio State guys are looking pretty good, and if they can secure that commitment from Hero Canoe, that's going to be a major feather in the cap of Ryan Day and Ohio State defensive coaches if Larry Johnson uh, decides to stick around. There's just so much to talk about. Two more things. We'll get you out of here. Safety Tanner McAllister transferring from Oklahoma State to Ohio State following Jim Knowles. I mean, he's not a superstar, but he's a really solid player. He was a two-year starter there at Oklahoma State. I really like this, especially hopefully Lathan Ransom is okay. But, man, it looks like he suffered, you know, what could be a serious injury in the Rose Bowl. Hopefully he's going to be okay for next year. But uh, I like this, man. Tanner McAllister following Jim Knowles from Oklahoma State to Ohio State. Absolutely. And what I what I look at in this transfer, Dave, this is what you're this is like your typical Jordan Fuller type of guy in the back end, because he's going to be a veteran who knows his defense. He's going to be able to get the secondary set. He's going to be able to coach those younger guys up to let them know the nuances and the ins and outs of how the defense works, where Jim expect them to be at, how to read their keys. So he's going to bring a valuable, valuable asset to the, to the Ohio State Buckeyes, which is his knowledge. He's a heck of a player. Um, you know, he's an all Big 12 type of player. And just getting him back there is a major upgrade over some of the guys that they have. And you get Josh Proctor back. The defense is looking like it's going to be so much better next year. You're going to have a competent defensive coordinator who knows his scheme in and out. He's also a linebacker coach, so the linebackers play should be much better. Uh, those guys should be able to read their keys, be able to trigger whenever they uh, trust their eyes. And with the veteran with McAllister coming over and getting Proctor back on the back end, it's definitely going to help. You got your younger guys on the uh, corners that are coming up that they're really high on. And then you have your two starters back at corner. So I like where this defense is headed. It can't go anywhere but up right now. But that was a major get for Ohio State in bringing him in there, especially with his knowledge of the defense. And he's going to be, be able to bring that leadership aspect to the defense that Ohio State would desperately need installing the new defense over the spring. All right. Final thing. NIL gone wild. That's right. NIL gone wild. Eastern Michigan is now offering kids a million dollars to come play for Eastern Michigan. Explain this nonsense to the listeners, my friend. It's it's pretty crazy, Dave. I saw this uh, former Eastern Michigan great Charlie Batch, former Steelers quarterback, tweeted out to Caleb Williams, the Oklahoma transfer, that if he comes to Eastern Michigan, one year deal that him and his group, whatever, you know, organization that he's a part of, they're just going to give him a bag of cash for a million dollars. I mean, I, I'm all for kids getting paid, but at this point, we're, we're going off the rails here. When Eastern Michigan is throwing a million dollars out to people, that just tells you, like, this thing is going, you know, sideways here. And good for the kids to get paid, but there needs to be some form of regulation. I mean, you look at Texas A&M. If reports are coming out that they're spending anywhere between 25 to 30 million on their recruiting class for the number one recruiting class, which has five or six five star players, 19 four stars, three three stars. And they're not, they're not done yet. Basically, Texas A&M boosters are setting up an LLC uh, and they're using that as a charitable donation to pay these players and. Where, where Texas A&M is kind of smart with their business is these are multi-year deals. If a kid decides to leave Texas A&M, they leave money on the table. So that's kind of their way to dangle that. Eastern Michigan, they're just, you know, trying to get their name out there, kind of like Dion and Jackson 
Jackson State, they're just trying to throw a million dollars out there. If they can land a kid, great. But if you if you're to believe Charlie Bass, they're saying that they have a plan in place to where they're ready to start paying. And I question like, hey, some of these Mac schools are struggling financially. Can you can you spend that money better if you're donating that to the actual athletic program? Uh, you know, getting Caleb Williams to Eastern Michigan is great, but that's just kind of a, a money grab here. You have to look at the bigger picture. If you're a guy like that, the end goal is to be a first round quarterback where you're making millions and millions of dollars and get to that second contract. So it's all fun and games, but NIL is going crazy. The, this, this is what happens when the NCAA is incompetent and can't figure out how to regulate this. Every school is bind by their own state legislation. And the way things are going right now, if teams don't start, you know, competing with Texas A&M and Texas and the teams in the South where they're paying 250000 per four or five star, then you're going to see droves and droves of the top in guys just going to those schools based off money. You already see the vast majority of prospects staying in the South. Ohio State, I don't worry about. They're always going to recruit at a high level. But you look at the Midwest region, unless some of these other big time programs step up to the plate, they're going to be severely left behind. Great stuff out of Jonah Booker. Really appreciate it, Jay Book. Thank you to all the listeners out there for tuning in the show. We appreciate that very much as well. Hope everyone has a great day and a great weekend. Let's try the Buckeye swag, best damn band in the land. Mm-hmm.